So welcome back. Uh, in my last video on our Thai shock, I introduced you to one of our secret weapons, and now I want to introduce you to our secret weapons, secret weapon. You like that? I like it, yeah. I and so this is Wayne Israelson. And Wayne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are. How are your secret weapon for this project? So my name is Wayne Israelson. I own Alltech Motorsports. We're a suspension tuning and service shop in Southern California. I've been racing desert or rock crawling or motorcycles since I was small. And, and uh, so I learned suspension just because. Because you had to. Well, I never had a ton of money. And so I always had to keep up with the fast guys, and the only way to do it was hold it open while they were closing it. So I learned that suspension was the way to do that. And, uh, and off I got off motorcycles. I got into four-wheel vehicles, and the translation took a few years to figure out, but you find that the, and I found this with air, airframes, working on the airplanes too with Lonnie and, uh, and Doug, that uh, the principles are all exactly the same. There's no difference. You literally are doing, you're literally managing the same energy maybe in a different form and maybe a different mass and different velocities, but the energy is the same. You just got to figure out what the translation is. With uh, Lonnie's help in flying, which was pretty amazing, it was actually a pretty easy transition. It uh, took a few iterations, but it was pretty easy. So, so, so I, I guess you kind of work with a driver, you work with someone yeah, when yep. you're doing that. And so Lonnie's kind of our equivalent in this, in this game. He's yeah. giving you the feedback you need. L long ago, I learned when I began tuning suspension for people, because I didn't start out doing that. I was a painting contractor, of all things. <laughs> um, but I... Uh, we didn't paint these, did we? No, we, we, no. we coated them. We didn't paint them. <laughs> um, so... Next well, time. Next time. Well, I'll do it for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so what, what I learned long ago is your job as a shock tuner is not to tune shocks. Anybody can do the cause and effect shock tuning part. Yep. Your job as a shock tuner is listen to what the driver, i.e. pilot, yep. or the operator, the rider, whatever, is trying to tell you. Because oftentimes he feels something. He feels the rebound is too fast. Why is it too fast? Because it bucks. And he thinks it's rebound, but yep. honestly it's never rebound ever because there's not enough spring force in an off-road vehicle to lift it off the ground. It's a bounce, exactly like an airplane landing. It's a bounce. We have to dissipate energy on the landing, not on the rebound. So Got everybody it. ties down the rebound, but it's not supposed to work that way. So it was a very similar transition where long ago I learned to work with, listen to what an off-road driver was saying, but then apply it to the actual damper. Got it. A little bit different than, hey, it's too stiff and you soften it. That, that's just you doing what the driver tells yep. you. You need to figure it out. And then, and then so the transition to work with the, the guys in the airplanes was not too, not too, too much bad. relief. Yeah. All right, now, I've watched you on YouTube, but how did we find you? Or how did Lonnie find you? Uh, okay, you I, I got to remember. It was long ago. There's a race that's big for me called King of the Hammers that okay. I was at. And uh, while I was there, I got a text message from a friend of mine who rock crawled with me, his name is Dubston, Dustin Webster. So now we're talking rock crawling. This, this is, is this is in crawling. a vehicle. Like. Yeah, this is in the vehicle, yeah. rock crawling, <laughs> like competition rock crawling. Yeah. He and Becca were in the modified class, a pro mod class, and I was with my wife was a stock mod, or, uh, I was fun for my wife who was a stock mod driver, and then eventually we built a pro mod and competed against uh, Got it. Dustin and Becca, and we became good friends, they're good people, and yeah. uh, Dustin just texted me and said, I, got a guy who's looking to get some suspension help with airplanes and I'm like cool I, I I did work for Fox for a couple years it was only two 15 to 17 yep uh, I, I didn't stay there I didn't fit in the corporate industry corporate world very well yeah. I'm too independent Me neither. yeah Me neither. I know it's yeah. not it was it was <laughs> it's not my, their fault I met great people and they're great but yeah. I didn't I didn't fit so I moved on and started doing my own thing again um, but I had worked on some military aircraft, and I'm like, I can do that. And so when I got back from King of the Hammers, I think I called Lonnie back. We had a long conversation, and then I believe Doug called me, or we, we got a conference call, and that's kind of how, that's how we, we started. found each other. And how yeah, long ago was that? It had to be three, four years. Four yeah. years, I yeah. think. I yeah. think it's something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. So we've got it now. We've got the shock. Yes. And, uh, and just so you know, Wayne's here at our factory here in Palmer. He's teaching our staff the ins and outs of putting one of these things together, the things to do, the things not to do. It's, uh, I've watched some of it. He's, my guys are basically getting a master class in everything about shocks right now. I talk too much. <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt it, I highly doubt it. Um, 
What was, when you were building this, what, what was different about aviation or about this application versus well, what a normal one would, or your normal environment would be? So there's a few things were different. So the first thing we did was we had a long conference call, uh, Doug and, and, and Lonnie and I did, and explaining what it was. And the extension damper is the, is the hard, is the most, not hard, it's just kind of different, different what we do. Most so extension dampers. damper, if we had to explain that, is there a part yeah, you would yeah. point to? or? Well, yeah, we can we can explain to that. So okay. basically, here we have a shaft wrapped up. We'll unwrap this really fast so we can show you. Okay. Cut this out if it's not good. But this shaft would run into and out of this shock similar to this in, in the, it, well, yep. on a Super Cub, since they're below the A-arm, the landing gear is below what we call the A-arm, when, when the Cub lands and compresses the suspension, it extends this damper. Yep. And so the compression stroke is on extension. We're in a car, they're like this, and compression stroke is on the co collapse portion. Got it. Got it. And so as simple as that seems, it's not that simple. <laughs> okay, all right, so it started right there. Yeah, so that was the, the biggest difference. And then we really had to kind of figure out the translation, like I said before. The, I, I guess the hardest thing was to know what the plane was actually expected to do, because I, I've been around aviation all my life, and I, I you know, I've, I've flown with my dad. Who we had, he built a KR2, and okay, I sure. still have one of his KR2s hanging in my garage. Oh, and cool. we, Some experimental stuff, and yeah. and we flew, but it was always, always off, uh, Logan, Utah Airport. Yep. Always, yep. always from there, and I never got off. So on off, runway. Uh, yeah, on yeah. runway all the time, and so I knew bush planes, and I knew stuff about them, but I've never experienced. Right. So we, I go up to Oregon, and we fly yeah. around with. Uh, with Doug and Lonnie, and I realized, well, the first place he lands is like literal, similar to race course whoops. I mean, it's it's a dredged island I he, with- I think he actually made those. Didn't he actually add in bumps, I think, for that one? I don't know if he did that one or not, but I do <laughs> know- I'm getting it off camera, uh, yes, he did. But. I do know that it was a dredge island where the dredge had just done this and made these yeah, mogul-like yep. things, and he was landing there, and I'm like, he's like, I'm gonna, you're gonna land where? <laughs> <laughs> and that same thing happened. We came to Alaska for a test uh, at, the, yeah. at the resort, and uh, he said, we're gonna land on that mountain. I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> and he it's landed. It's fun being the his, passenger, his, right? Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Nah, sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but, so that was the thing. And one thing that was really uh, uh, reared its ugly head was how much inertia the aircraft has and why. Because you've got that big wing and it's flying all the time. Even when you're going slow, it's yeah. flying. So you would expect an aircraft that light to be just moved around a lot by the terrain. But I was amazed at how much the wing spread out like that and how much, you know, probably wind resistance to it moving up, the inertia kept the airplane relatively stable and it made it way easier for me to wrap my head around, well, I know what we need now, I, I, right? Right, right, so, right. So that was a really big, in the first iteration we had a, a separate damping component versus a damping, the piston was in a cage and it worked okay, but it had its flaws and we just, I think there's three or four iterations since then to get to where we are now. Yeah, and I remember, I mean, we ended up with this spring, yeah. but I remember your first spring didn't, didn't look like this. The, the first spring was shorter and bigger around, yeah. and it ran, with, our damper was about this long, and then the cage was down here. Yeah. And then we did that, and then we did a spring inside a spring to make the, the two dual rate, which worked really well, but it made it really heavy, so we had to, had to, go, back had to go back a little bit on performance but in the end we were actually to actually get a better performing shock than what so we this, were there. This is this, so, I mean we came to the great. right outcome right? Yeah so we're we're holding 2,000 ish pounds at least we're holding gross weight with just barely a quarter inch and it's it's got more it's got more shaft showing or more less sag than the competition yeah. so we have more yeah. available up travel from at right height so if you're going through a rough runway we have lots of travel but it's not all the way up like this rough and bouncing it's it's got travel but it's it's perfect we have a 60 40 rule in suspension it's rules are made to be broken but we try to stay within 60 and 40 percent of travel at our ride height gross got it does that make sense yes it so, totally yeah. does yeah hopefully to you too but i get what you're talking all about right, okay tell us about this special part <laughs> this part this is this is an internal floating piston this goes it lives right at the top of the of the shock like this, but we had an iteration of this shock right here, and it worked really well except for in the ground maneuver. 
the ground maneuver. Right, and Lonnie was really... Area, and side hilling. Right? I made the mistake of, ask, of saying to Lonnie, so this just helps when you're taxiing. And he exactly. ripped me, oh, yeah. he ripped me apart. He's you like, mean, no, and side wins yeah, and well, side loves. He went through all these other scenarios. Yeah. That, but so, explain this one to everybody. So we, one of the things we had done to try and get the weight down, because weight is huge in aircraft, right? Yep, so, yep. Um, and I learned that a lot. Uh, like in a, in a truck, you know, there's 7,000 pounds. If you have to add 50 pounds, I add 50 pounds. Yeah, but whatever. in the airplane, yeah. you don't add four pounds, right? So, <laughs> right, right. So what we, we had done is we'd taken the IFP section out and we'd made it kind of an emulsion shock so all the air and the oil was mixed. But what happened was there's a piston like this and the oil, and the way they sit on the aircraft, the oil and, and air were only on this portion of it here in, a, in about like that. Yeah. And the re that's the oil level and the air was up here like this because the air, they sit about like, like this, yeah, right? Exactly. And so, yeah, it's and like that. so there, there was a lot of piston out of the oil so the damping was bad until you got it mixed up in froth so as, it, it. as they just fly around the oil settles and the air bubble becomes at the top and all that and we needed to figure out a way to separate the oil and the oil air and the air yep and doug was pushing me to get shocks back they'd sent him down for another test and there was another test coming and i don't remember we had put the shock together and we, they were actually boxed up and I was driving home from the desert. I go to the desert about every twice or three times a week to do testing on trucks and things. Yeah. yeah. And I'm driving home. We're a little different than the desert up here. We're like a winter desert. Yeah. It was... <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. What is that white stuff? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's cold. It's snowing out there. this morning. Yeah. I know. I know. Keep uh, going. I grew up in northern Utah. I'm familiar <laughs> okay. with that. I just don't deal with it anymore. On the way home, and because I think better on my way home, and I'm driving, I think I know how to do it. And so. This is the this is the part that's the top of the shock, and it it sits against this part like this is your top out. Mm -hmm. And I called Doug and said, Doug, do you care if we lose a quarter inch of travel? And he's like, No, we wanted to lose a little travel. We got five plus inches. We need to get it down some anyway. Right. Like, Great. Right. I made this IFP to fit in here and go like that. And now the air is all here, and now it's all separated. So now the piston sits here, hundred percent. Co it, in the oil, oil, no air at all, right. and we have a little bit of pressure built up so that when the IFP need, does need to move to account for this, this volume loss to the shaft, it has that much, much, and it's not forcing that movement with vacuum, which causes cavitation. It's literally pushing that much, and so it was like it was like night and day. We actually made Lonnie smile. Yeah, we, you, yeah, one of the few times. Yeah, I, well, okay. yeah, I well. can. I'm a win. I don't need to do it again my whole life. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, so what else? So, how are my guys doing? By the way, they're learning how they're to build good. these. Yeah, your they're guys good, are good. It. They were really resourceful this morning. We had a dyno we, we needed to get get set up, and yeah, 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 we're really happy. Everything Very good. good. Okay, so what else? What else? In, is there anything else special about this project you want to share with everybody that you think is interesting? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm just amazed at all the titanium and the coated titanium and the parts. And this spring was a long order, if I recall. We yes. needed to deal with yes. like three different companies before yes. we finally made one to get it. And yes. we made a spring guide to keep it off the inside of the shock, which happens with other people. Where's the spring guide? Where's the... Uh, I don't see the spring guide. Oh, spring there guide. they are right there. So that's Got the it. spring guide. So that runs on the shaft and inside the spring. You want me to open it? Yeah, let's open one up. Let's get, give people a little bit All of right, a view. cool. Because this is a never open, no service shock, right? So theoretically, they don't see these parts, right? Uh, it's serviceable. It is serviceable? It's serviceable. We're hoping they keep it. I don't think they have to. They shouldn't have yeah. to service it often. I think we're going to say serviceable by us, just to make sure they get all. It's yeah. not field serviceable. Yeah, not field uh, serviceable. No, so it is, it is factory serviceable. Any anything that has an O-ring, the O-ring will eventually square and go bad. So eventually, so this is, we may have to service it, but it's fully doable. We can do it here. Uh, it's easy. So the, there's the spring. There's a the spring guide. Spring guide. It goes inside there, keeps the spring running true, and it keeps it on the shaft and from it keeps it from keeps rubbing. Keeps it from rubbing on the side. What we have when you put the spring inside, these springs will oscillate a lot and they'll yeah. rub on the shaft or they'll rub right. on inside the body. And then you pollute the oil with yes, all the shards of uh, uh -huh. aluminum, the basically. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a good, a good development in the, a good step in the development. Right. Really and good. it looks light. So Very, Doug, Doug yeah. let it happen because it was light. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, it's, li it's lighter than the oil. <laughs> it's lighter, it's lighter so than the oil. So the Delrin is lighter the, than the oil. There so we more go. More Delrin's good. They're, they're very, exact. And that's at, I'm assuming, that's at maximum, what do you call it when the thing stacks? That that's is the stop? stop. So that's max travel. Okay, that is that's actually max travel. the stop for the max travel. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it, it literally 
stops the spring just before coil bind. Perfect. Yeah, coil bind is, is bad. Well, co when you coil bind and keep pulling, you break things. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that spring becomes not a 700 pound per inch spring, 750 pound per inch spring. It becomes a what's the tensile strength of steel? It's no like idea. Like something high. Pound. This one is like 90,000. 90,000. So that's pretty big. And if if you do bottom out too, that also doesn't that stress the spring over time too, doesn't it? Yes, the spring that bottoms out all the time is what they call running at over stress, over 100% stress. And uh, just as a small example, you get a spring running at 80% stress. It probably has a typical spring. This one may or may not be different, but a typical off-road spring in my world, running at 80% stress, has about five million cycles in it. Got it. Got it. Take that same spring around at 100% stress and it has less than a million cycles in it. Got it. So it's a big change. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, Wayne, what, I can't thank you enough for working on this project with no, us. No, it's been a lot of fun. I've got to do some things I didn't think I'd ever get to do, and it's yeah. been a great, so thanks for having yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get you up here. You know, you got to come up here and do some more off-road off landings. And we can do that, yeah. You'll probably come up with some other ideas for us from, from your world. We are already working on a couple, yeah. Uh, yeah okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more, first of all, Wayne's got his own YouTube channel, which we'll put on the links down below to see some of the other work he's done. And of course, to hear more about the tie shocks, which are officially going into production and delivery, you can go to our website at Alaska Gear Company. Thanks.